If you have ever wondered how sugar gets to your kitchen, you're in the right place. It seems simple, right? You just go to the supermarket, buy a package, and there you have it. Sugar for your coffee, your desserts, or whatever else you want to sweeten. But what you probably don't imagine is all the process behind those little white or brown crystals. Sugar is not born in a package, nor does it magically appear in the store. Its story begins in the fields, where a plant called sugarcane grows under the sun for months before being harvested. Then, it goes through a long transformation process during which it is crushed, boiled, crystallized, and refined until it becomes the product we all know. And the most interesting part is that this process is not new. Humanity has been extracting sugar from cane for thousands of years. The ancient Persians and Arabs were already producing it long before Europeans brought it to the rest of the world. Today, it is one of the largest industries on the planet, with millions of tons of sugar produced each year in countries like Brazil, India, Thailand, and many more. But how exactly does a plant transform into sugar? How is the sweetness extracted from the sugarcane's stalk? What happens in the sugar mills? In this journey, we will break down each stage of the process to clearly and simply understand how sugar goes from the fields to your table. The first step of this story begins in the sugarcane fields, where everything starts with a plant that has been cultivated for centuries for its incredible ability to produce natural sweetness. Sugarcane is a tropical plant that grows best in warm, humid climates. It is cultivated over vast stretches of land and needs a good amount of sun and water to develop properly. From the moment it is planted until it is ready for harvest, it can take between 10 and 24 months, depending on the variety and the climatic conditions. When the cane reaches its maturity, it is time to harvest it. In some places, the harvest is still done manually, with workers using machetes to cut the stalks one by one. This method allows careful selection of the ripest canes and prevents damage to the plant. In large plantations, however, harvesting machines are used to perform the job more quickly and efficiently. Once the cane has been harvested, it cannot wait too long. If left out in the open for too long, the sugar within the stalk begins to degrade, so it is crucial to transport it quickly to the sugar mills, where the juice extraction process will begin. When the canes arrive at the factory, the first thing that is done is to wash them thoroughly to eliminate any dirt, leaves or impurities. Then they go through a series of giant mills that crush and press them to extract all their juice. This sugarcane juice is the liquid that contains the plant's natural sugars. However, it also has fibers, minerals and other compounds that are not needed to make refined sugar. To ensure maximum extraction, factories use a method called imbibition water where hot water is sprayed over the pressed cane and it is pressed again several times. This way, up to 90% of the juice contained in the stalks is extracted. The solid residue left after extraction is called bagasse and is not wasted. It is used as fuel in the sugar mills themselves to generate energy or is converted into products such as paper, cardboard and even eco-friendly materials. The extracted sugarcane juice is not yet the sugar we know. In its natural state, it is a dark liquid with a very strong smell. To transform it into sugar, it must first be purified. This process begins by heating the juice to kill any bacteria or microorganisms. Then, lime is added to neutralize its acidity and help separate the impurities. Afterward, it is allowed to settle so that the solid particles deposit at the bottom and a cleaner liquid can be extracted. Once the juice is purified, it moves on to the next stage, evaporation. At this point, the goal is to eliminate most of the water contained in the juice to concentrate the sugars. A system of giant evaporators is used where the liquid is heated under controlled pressure until it turns into a thick syrup. This syrup is the precursor to sugar and although it does not yet have crystals, it already contains a high concentration of sucrose. To convert the syrup into solid sugar, a process called crystallization is carried out. First, the syrup is heated in large tanks and small sugar particles are added as seeds that will serve as a base for forming the crystals. As the syrup cools slowly, 
the sugar crystals begin to grow. This is a delicate process where temperature and time must be precisely controlled to obtain crystals of the proper size. When the crystals have reached the desired shape, they are separated from the remaining liquid, known as molasses. Molasses is a thick, dark byproduct that is used to make products like rum, animal feed, and even natural sweeteners. The sugar crystals that have formed still contain some moisture, so they are dried with hot air until they are completely dry and ready for consumption. At this point, we have raw sugar, which is light brown in color. Depending on the type of sugar to be produced, it can be sold as is, as brown sugar, or subjected to an additional refining process to obtain white sugar. Refined sugar goes through a series of filtrations with activated carbon or special resins that eliminate any natural coloring. Then, it is recrystallized and dried again until those uniform, white granules found in supermarkets are obtained. When the sugar has gone through the entire process of refining and drying, it is ready for the next stage, packaging. But before it reaches our tables, the sugar still must go through a meticulous process of classification and quality control. Not all sugar is the same. Depending on its final destination, it can vary in purity, crystal size, and even texture. It is in this phase that its presentation is defined from the finest powdered crystals used in pastry making to the coarser crystals used in the food industry. The packaging of sugar is an automated process in most factories. The production lines work at high speed to fill and seal each bag with the exact amount of product. Weighing machines are used to ensure that each package contains the precise quantity, whether in small bags for households, multi-kilo sacks for bakeries, or even large containers for the food industry. Each package goes through a labeling system where key information such as the production date, manufacturing batch, and the origin of the sugar is printed, allowing its origin to be tracked if necessary. But the work does not end here. Before the sugar reaches the points of sale, it must undergo rigorous quality controls. In specialized laboratories within the same plant, tests are carried out to verify that the product meets the standards of purity, moisture, and granularity. Possible contaminants or residues are also inspected, ensuring that the sugar is completely free of impurities. All of this is fundamental to comply with the food safety regulations that govern food production in each country. Once the sugar is ready for distribution, its journey to various destinations begins. For domestic consumers, the packages are sent to distribution centers from where they are delivered to supermarkets and stores. Bakeries and restaurants receive larger presentations, while processed food factories buy sugar in large quantities, whether in sacks or in liquid form, to incorporate it into the production of products such as beverages, cookies, chocolates, and other foods. In the case of export, sugar is packed in containers and sent to different countries via maritime or land routes, depending on the destination. This logistics process is key to ensuring that the sugar arrives in optimal conditions everywhere. The producing companies work with strict controls to prevent the product from being contaminated or degraded during transportation, protecting it from moisture and external conditions that could affect its quality. Sugar, despite being a daily consumer product, is the result of a sophisticated production chain that involves thousands of people, from farmers to engineers, transporters, and traders. After this entire journey, the sugar finally arrives at homes, where it becomes an essential ingredient in the kitchen. Many times, when sweetening a cup of coffee or preparing a dessert, we do not stop to think about all the effort that lies behind each grain. From the cultivation fields to the refining, packaging, and distribution, sugar goes through a long path before arriving on our table. Sugar is a product so common in our daily lives that we rarely ask ourselves how it is made. However, behind every package, there is a story that begins in the fields of cane or beet and goes through a series of industrial processes until it reaches the supermarkets. What today seems like a basic product in our diet has for centuries been a highly valued commodity, a symbol of wealth and trade in different cultures. Now that we know all the work behind it, it is inevitable to look at it with different eyes. Knowing where the products we consume come from helps us appreciate the effort of those who produce them and become more aware of the impact they have on the economy, 
the environment and society. The sugar production process is just one of the many examples of how the foods we take for granted in our daily routine have a fascinating background. If you are interested in discovering more about the manufacturing of other products, let me know in the comments. See you in the next video.